Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to Tableau Conference and uh, my session about understanding level of detail expressions. Uh, my name is Bora. I'm a product manager at Tableau. I'm one of the uh, people who created level of detail expressions. So I'm happy to take your feedback, positive or negative, after the session. Uh, when I'm not working on uh, LOD expressions, I have a little side project. She's six years old. Uh, we're trying to make the next great artist out of her. Uh, so this is her at the Picasso Museum, She's looking pretty excited. Uh, this is what she did last night. So you could tell we have a lot of work to do. Uh, but we keep trying. This is her doing balloon animals and origami ice cream. Uh, our latest project is, uh, I got a drum kit, I'm teaching her how to drum, and she would like to play uh, You Could Be Mine from Guns N' Roses. <laughs> so back to topic. Uh, so what is this session all about? There are multiple ways of teaching level of detail expressions, and you will find several different sessions, uh, hands-on or uh, breakout sessions in this conference, and they all have different approaches. Uh, you will find some of them that will take a problem, and they will give you a solution to it. It could take 10 steps, maybe five of them are LOD expressions, so you know exactly how to solve that specific problem, and they will repeat this for different problems. But I think first you need to have a fundamental understanding of how these things work. How are they affected by filters? How do you combine them with other things? So this session is meant to be something uh, that will teach you how they work, what happens under the covers. So instead of learning a specific solution to a given problem, uh, you learn all the pieces where you can combine them together in however fashion you want to solve your own problems. So before we start, first we have to define what level of detail is. So level of detail defines the granularity of your data. And the data has a granularity the moment it is collected. Imagine you have a transactional database where uh, each transaction is a row of data. That would be the level of detail of that table. If you have a sensor that's collecting data, that's uh, doing this every second, uh, the location of the sensor, what it measures, and the when it's collected will be the level of detail uh, of that row of data. So let's take a look at an example. Uh, in this case, what you're seeing uh, is a Superstore uh, data database uh, that we ship, and uh, there's order ID as one of the columns. By looking at this, you can probably tell order ID is not the level of detail of this view because there are mul multiple order IDs in the view. Uh, this is because each order ID contains multiple items, uh, hence causing replication. So if you would like to get the granularity of the data, the combination will give you a unique row and that will be the actual granularity of data is collected or stored in this case. So as you analyze your data, you add more and more levels of aggregation. Right? You know, the moment you build your first viz, you aggregate the data. You drag that sum of sales, you get one mark. So in this case, the level of detail of this visualization is region because we have the region as a dimension in there. And since there are four regions uh, in this data set, you will see four bars. Uh, you can go more complex. The more measures you add, you will get combinations of those. So in this case, we have both category and region. Uh, and what you're seeing is each mark is a combination of the two. So it could be furniture east, uh, office supplies west, et cetera. There's more than four since it's a combination. And as you could see, in this case, uh, I put the pills on different shelves. First it was on the row shelf, now it is on the uh, marks card. So different shelves actually have different uh, kind of effect on the level of detail of your view. So even though dimensions affect it, it matters what shelf they're on. So let's talk about how different shelves react to this. Uh, I highlighted the shelves that impact the level of detail if you drag a dimension onto them. In this case, you could see uh, pretty much everything is highlighted except filters and pages. And pages have a dashed line as opposed to uh, a solid line. And the reason for that is typically when you drag a dimension into the view, you will see an increase in the number of marks if it is finer grained than the, what you have in the data source, uh, what, what you have in the vis. But for pages shelf, you typically don't see this because it also hides the extra marks. Uh, so let's say you have sales. That is one mark. And you drag the year of sales onto pages shelf. Now, that value decreases because now it's computing your sales instead of across all of the years just for a particular year, as you would expect. But if you're, you're on the page 2010, it will only show the mark for 2010. So it will look like nothing had happened uh, in terms of mark number changes. But under the covers, it's actually doing the right thing. And here are the dimensions that have no impact on level of detail. 
And the reason for that is, one, uh, if you drag something on a tooltip, you will notice Tableau will automatically wrap it in attribute. Uh, so it becomes a measure. It's never a dimension. Hence, it has no impact on the level of detail. And filter shelf, even though it has impact on the results because it's, it's filtering things, it doesn't actually affect the level of detail of your view. So when you write something like this, average sales, uh, this is your typical Tableau aggregation, or you drag the pill, Tableau automatically added some around it, uh, you will get as many marks as uh, the size of the domain of your uh, dimensions. So it will compute at the level of detail of the vis visualization. I don't think I have to explain that to this audience. Uh, but sometimes you don't want it to be at the level of detail of the vis. You want to have a custom level of detail. And that's where LOD, level of detail expressions come into play. So you just wrap it up like this, fancy animation, and this computes at the state level, regardless of what your level of detail for the viz is. You could be having category in the view. This will still compute at state level, because you specifically define at what level of detail you would like it to compute. So there are three parts to a level of detail expression, and there are three types of level of detail expressions, keywords. Uh, First, we have the keyword element, and we have three different keywords, fixed, include, and exclude. And I will spend a lot of time on each of these topics. Then you have the dimensionality. This is at what level of detail you want this thing to compute. In this case, let's say customer ID. Then I put my colon, and then it will be followed by what we call the aggregate expression, where you put your aggregation. In this case, sum of sales. And to make this more readable, what we do is we wrap it inside curly braces. Uh, when you look at this, it doesn't justify it because it's a relatively simple uh, equation. But typically, a lot of people would add multiple things in there. You can have multiple aggregations. You can have a chain of if statements. We don't actually limit you to just putting an aggregate in there. It has to be an aggregate. It could be more than one. It could be if statements, et cetera. So as a result, these things could get pretty nasty. You can have this really large calculation. It, it really helps to know where it starts and where it ends, and those curly braces help you with that. So let's start with fix, because it's the easiest thing to understand. Then we'll expand uh, upon with the other examples. Uh, so I'll pretend we have a visualization, and we have nice blue pills in this visualization. And you'll see them on the upper right corner. And uh, we'll say, here's the calculated field. Uh, what does it compute? So in this case, I have segment and category as two dimensions in my view. That's the vis LOD. And I wrote the calculation fixed category sum of sales. So this will give you sum of sales for each category, right? Because we said fixed is very specific. You say, this is exactly what I want. Ignore everything else. Just use this. So this is the behavior of the fixed. Does whatever you want it to do. So one problem fixed will help you solve is making dimensions out of aggregations. So if you remember my first example before the animation, I had something like average sales. And I said, this will always compute at the level of detail of this which means the behavior of that will change from this to this. If I drag it into a field that has customer ID, it will compute the sum of sales for customer. If I drag it into a view where it has state, it will compute at the level of state. So before you drag it, it doesn't know what it is doing. If you look at how we handle dimensions, they exist on their own on the data pane on the left-hand side. They have no dependency on what's in the view. Right? They describe themselves. So there's something wrong with sum of sales because it doesn't know at what level it's going to compute. At a given time, we don't know what it's going to return. Right? It is a surprise. It will change from this to this. Hence, we want to allow you to convert them into dimensions and use them as dimensions. So if you write this, total sales, you go to the context menu here, you will see that for sum of sales, there's no option to convert to something like a dimension because it is not defined by itself in the data pane. But you can work around this problem and say, well, how about with an example? I want to break this chart down by year of first purchase. Year of first purchase is an aggregate. Right? Per customer, I want to get the minimum date they purchased. And I want to make a dimension out of this because I want to slice this bar by that. So all you need to do is convert your calculation, write a calculation like this. Uh, here I'm saying for each customer, give me the minimum order date. That's the first purchase they ever made in my table. And now you will automatically realize that we just moved everything to uh, the, the result of this calculation to dimensions. It's not in measures like sum of sales will always be. So we even defaulted, we realizing what it is, uh, that it's the dimension. If we don't do this, and if you have a fixed level of detail uh, calculation, you can always drag it and make it into a dimension. 
to uh, f uh, further make the point, let's drag it in and see the end result first. I dragged it in, first purchase date, and since it's a date field, tab table automatically wrapped it in year, quarter, whatever, in this case year, and now my bars are sliced by the first purchase date. And what I'm seeing here is, if I divide by first event, it looks like my early customers are still contributing most to my sales because the blue bar is the largest. My newer customers are not contributing that, that much to my baseline. So again, go back, let's say you want to bin by aggregates. Again, if you realized, if you wanted to bin by aggregates and if you wrote an aggregate like this, you will see there's no bidding option in the context menu either. So how do I work around that problem? See here, create, there's no create bin option. Again, LOD to the rescue. So I'll just make it into a fixed LOD. In this case, it's uh, per customer name, sum of sales. And if I now right click on it, I'll see that there's convert to dimension and there's also create bins. Now I can create bins, which I wouldn't be able to do otherwise. And I can build a viz like this. That gives me this insight on, you know, uh, how the spending uh, varies uh, between different types of customers. I have a lot of customers who don't spend that much money. Well, I have some that spend almost $45,000. Another problem LODs will help you solve is this error. I'm sure you ran into this. It's probably the most Google Tableau error of all time. Uh, like you are trying to do something really simple. I want to understand how many days since the first order date, right? But Tableau will say, well, min order date is an aggregate. Order date is a row level thing. I can't mix the two. Well, the solution to this problem is, again, use an LOD calculation. In this case, I'm saying fixed LOD, uh, highlighting the important parts here, customer name and order date. Now, Tableau knows at what level this is going to compute, so it can actually treat this as a row level calculation. So we'll compute it for each customer, and I think it's important to start thinking about LOD expressions as if they're little tables that Tableau joins back in. And it's going to join this back at the level of row. So for each, uh, uh, order that you're seeing, you will also have a separate column that says, here's the first order. So when you ask Tableau to make a difference of the two, well, it's in the same row, you have two values that you can take a difference off because the minimum purchase date is just replicating for old values that belong to that customer. Hence, you don't get the error and you can uh, really easily work around this problem. And uh, I forgot to mention that this applies to all LOD expressions uh, in the fine print. It does not have to be uh, fixed. You could do include and exclude as well. Okay, so let's talk about include, where things get a little bit more interesting. So what we do with include is take whatever is into this, uh, in this example, segment, and add include whatever you specified as part of your LOD expression. So it's going through this example. Let's assume you have a viz, again, uh, where you have segment uh, in the, uh, the only dimension in the viz. Then you're saying include category sum of sales. Now, at what level would this sum of sales compute? So, well, take segment from the viz, right? Then it will include category. So you end up with include uh, essentially segment and cate category combinations when you're computing sum of sales. So how does this work? Because when you do something like include, you have this mismatch between the level of detail of the view and the calculation. If I go back to the previous example, now we're saying the uh, view has segment as the only dimension in it. So it will have, let's say, four marks. Uh, and when you do include category, now you will get results for each combination of the two. It will give you a mini table. Remember, LOD expressions are small tables that get joined back in. It has maybe 10 rows. So, so somehow, Tableau has to squish those 10 rows into the four marks you have in your view. So let's walk through an example on how that works. So here's the same example. This level of detail is segment. And let's say there are four marks. Uh, I color coded them. And this is your calculation, just like the previous example, include category sum of sales, and let's say uh, it's segment category because we're including category, and it has these uh, six marks. And to make it easier, I color-coded them, so light blue at the bottom uh, corresponds to the two blue dots at the top, so blue dots have the same segment but different categories at the top, uh, that hence the different shade of blue. And let's put some numbers in to make the math easier, to make it understand uh, a little clearer. So Tableau, again, has to squish this into those four points somehow. It will aggregate, right? Uh, and you will see the moment you drag this LOD expression into the view, it will just wrap inside an aggregate, in this case, doing an average. So let's walk through the numbers and see what this average does. We'll take seven and three, because they're in the same segment. Seven plus three divided by two, five. 
It will take two and zero, the same shades and same segment, two plus zero divided by two, one, and six and eight just move down because it's one mark in each case. There's no aggregation happening. So there are multiple ways of looking at this. Let's look at it as a table, since I said you should think of LLD expressions as tables. So this is what LLD expression returns, because it has segment category. Remember, we used include. It has these columns, segment and category, and you have sales for each combination. And what you have in the view is just this, consumer corporate home office. And this squishing will happen to get to the end result. And here's segment. And what it will do is aggregation down to the level of segment. It takes everything in that box that those three rows averages up and goes to that cell. That's the average value. It takes everything in that three uh, green area, puts it in the next, row, no, next cell, et cetera. And uh, I know pictures help a lot, but if you are you like SQL and you want to understand what happens under the covers, and here is a quick peek. Uh, all of the LOD expressions are joined back in uh, via inner joins in SQL. You're seeing here in red uh, is the query that is coming from the LOD expression. It is doing group by segment and category, since that's the level of detail of uh, the uh, LOD expression. And then it's joining back to a table that is grouped by only segment, that is highlighted in green here at, at the uh, bottom row. And it's doing an average around the results, which you can see the other green part at the top, to reduce those extra rows into a smaller number of rows. So what can you do with this? Uh, let's start with this example, uh, where I am trying to understand not my sales per year, but understand how much money my customers spend over time. What's the average spending per customer? Are they starting to spend more money over time or spending less money on my products? And I can do this using an include expression, right? Because I don't have the customer in there, but that's probably what I want to have it in there because I already have customer. If I want to get per customer purchase per year, I can do an include. So let's do that. I have include customer name. Now what I'm computing is customer name year combinations because it's an include. And I'll apply that. And Tableau won't do the smartest thing. It will wrap it inside a sum. There's no change because we're doing sum of sums. That's the same as doing uh, overall sum. But you can just click on the menu and say, no, the sum is not the right aggregate for this. I want to do an average. And the moment you do, do that, you'll, you'll realize you know, how overall spending is changing over time. On the left-hand side, you see that my customers were spending about $800 per year per customer. And then it went down. And the nice thing is, uh, I think this is an economic crisis. When it hit, it is also in uh, Salesforce, uh, sorry, um, Superstore data source. That's why it's going down. And then the recovery starts beginning, and people are spending more and more money. So th this is a really simple application, but it is a really common application. And the nice thing about this is I can go drill down from year to quarter. Since all my calculation does is take whatever is in the viz and include something else to it, it will just now take quarters and include customer. It will take months. So you don't have to worry about uh, being very specific like fix does uh, because it will react to what you're doing in the viz, like drilling up and down. So exclude. Now that we talked about include, exclude should automatically make sense of what it is going to do. But I will walk through the same example to clarify uh, what it will do. So imagine just the same example. We have segmented category this time as the pills in our view. And I write exclude category average sales. And what will this do? So we'll first take segment and category from the view. And then it will exclude category. Right? So it will cancel out. You end up with just segment. Let's go through the same steps uh, and look at this in a more visual way. I have this many marks, and how do I get to that many marks? And here's my viz level of detail. I have segment and category. And again, these are six marks. I just reversed the same problem. It's, I turned it upside down. And I have exclude category sum of sales, which means my calc will have uh, only segment because I'm excluding category from that two values. So that's my calc level of detail. And that is four marks. So now my calculation has four marks. Somehow Tableau will increase the number to uh, six marks in this case. And I put the numbers in to make it easier to follow. So you have a 10, 2, 8, 6. And even though we'll wrap it in average, in this case, we're going to do a replication. So we'll take 10 and replicate it to the other shades of blue. 10, 10, and 2 will replicate the other shades of orange because they're in the same uh, segment. And 6 and 8 will carry over because there's no change. 
And notice that since we're replicating instead of aggregating, it really doesn't matter if you say average there. You can put min, max, adder, whatever you want, and it will still work because it's not doing any transformation. It's just replicating the numbers. And let's do the same thing and look at the tables that are being returned. Again, LOD expressions are many tables that are being joined back in. So here's the LOD expression, the simple one, because we're excluding. Just segment is a level of detail, and dimensions in the sheet are two of them, segment and category. Here we go. And what will happen is it will replicate it. As you can see, it takes the value of the consumer, replicates it to all categories within the consumer segment, takes the value of corporate, replicates it to all categories within the corporate segment, and so on. And under the covers, the way this works is, again, a SQL query that doesn't interjoin. And in this case, we just flip the roles. Uh, the inner join uh, has a group by segment. That's the level of detail for the exclude calculation. The outer join has category and segment. Since these tables have different number of rows, when you do the join, it will replicate. OK, so what can you do with exclude? Uh, let's look at some examples. A percent of total uh, is a classic example because your total is, let's say, the pane, and your marks are the values without the exclusion. So you can compare. Uh, that value to the rest of the uh, bars within that uh, pane. Right? In, this say, in this case, I'm doing sum of sales, the value of each bar, divided by exclude subcategory, which means it is just the category, that whole uh, window, uh, and divide by it, that will give me percent of total. And one nice thing about Tableau and LOD expressions is we understand that there is this replication happening. So if you do something like a total, you will realize that we're not messing up by uh, double counting the numbers. So here, we have the same number replicating for an each pane. You can see 674,966 is repeating four times, and the next one is repeating whatever number of times. So if you actually do a total of all of those, you would have a much bigger bar for grand total, right? This is like, looks like the sum of the three uh, in terms of proportion. And that is exactly what Tableau is doing, because Tableau is aware of the fact that this exclude calculation is causing this replication. So instead of replicating and then summing it up and skewing your results, it will be smart about it and say, well, I know what's going on. I'll just total each of the bars only once. So we talked about all these cases where you say include blah, sum of sales, or exclude something, sum of sales. Uh, but we also allow you to do things like include nothing, sum of sales, uh, fix nothing, sum of sales. So what happens when you do that? So again, same exact example. Well, I actually, I, uh, for some reason, replaced the uh, category with county this time. So let's say you have state and county and you do include sum of sales and there's nothing there. As you would expect, this will take whatever's in the view, add nothing to it, you'll end up the same, with the same result. And here, the same thing, state county excludes nothing, uh, you'll get the same results because it's excluding nothing. You're probably thinking, well, why would anyone do this? Um, and the reason for that is remember the error about mixing aggregates and disaggregates. Right? If you want to work around that problem without adding anything, in include or exclude, you can use this hack to work around it. It will make the message, message disappear uh, without uh, forcing you to add or remove anything uh, from LOD. So there's a special case for fixed, uh, because fixed, as you know, means whatever I tell you to do, uh, do aggregation at that level. So if you say fix nothing, or shorthand for it is just curly braces sum of sales, uh, it will take it as, OK, I want, you want me to provide one value for the entire table. This is the same experience when you first uh, sit with ta uh, using Tableau, you drag sum of sales, you don't have any dimensions, you just get one value. Then you panic like, oh, what happened to all my data? It's just only one value. So that's the same experience. It will give you one value for the entire table. So we talked about examples where there was always this overlap. Uh, you say uh, state, county, exclude county, or add something. So there was this overlap where there was a clear join that we, we can do. But there are cases where we don't block you from doing it. You can actually have two different calculations with no overlap. So how does that work and what would Tableau do? So here's an example. It's kind of a forced example to explain what it does. Uh, probably not very realistic. But let's assume you're trying to understand your customer spending. How much do they spend uh, at my stores? And there's this guy, I think John in this case, he just travels to all of these places and will go to California and just get uh, chewing gum, go somewhere, get a chocolate bar. And so your residents are spending, let's say, $500 a month, and this guy is spending uh, 50 cents a month. And he's skewing your results. And you're like, well, I'm I want to treat this person, uh, add up all his travel uh, spending, and pretend that he spent that, mu that much money in all of his states. 
as opposed to just whatever he spent on the states. So here, LOD expression is customer, and dimensions in the sheet is state. And we know in the underlying data there's a relationship between these two columns. Even if the, your LOD expression doesn't tell us, we, we know what, how rows align. So we will add this intermediate join to make this work, and Tableau will actually do this. Um, so it's pretty crazy given how simple the expression itself is. So first it will say, well, I have this data, uh, and dimensions in the sheet are small. First, uh, I'm going to do a join, which will cause replication. You could see the sum for uh, John is being repeated for all of the states he visited. Then we have to come back down to state level, because that's the level of detail of the viz. And it will do what we did in our exclude examples, uh, sorry, include examples. It will just add an aggregate over it to get to that level. Uh, so we do pretty interesting things under the covers, even though we tried to keep the syntax very simplistic and easy to use. Uh, so when you think about level of detail expressions, it's really important to understand the filter sequence in Tableau because different expressions are impacted differently by uh, different filters. So in Tableau, we have multiple levels of filters. Um, and I color coded them because extract filters decide what data goes into the extract. So it's a class of its own. Then we have data source filters that run uh, at the very beginning and that decides how, what we get from the data source. And then we have context filters, dimension filters, measure filters, and table calc filters. And table calc filters, again, are a different color because uh, the other ones will impact actual data. It will filter data out. The last one will hide data points. So it's not going to impact under the table calculation because they're just invisible uh, as opposed to being filtered out from the actual this. So here, uh, one, difference, uh, one thing to think about is uh, actually context filters are not that different from dimension filters. We just wanted to add another layer, so we duplicated it early on. And I'll show you some examples of how you promote something that was a dimension filter to a context filter to have it behave differently. So if you look at this, fixed happens after con context filters. That means if you add a context filter, it, it will impact the results of a fixed calculation. Include, exclude happen after dimension filters. And that means if you had a dimension filter like state, which is a dimension, and say, I don't want these states, it will impact how we compute uh, include, exclude results. And table calcs are affected by measure filters, uh, and the ref lines, trend lines, box plots are affected by table calc filters. And the logic here is, since you can use fixed as a dimension by itself, it doesn't make sense for it to be impacted by dimension filters, because it's a dimension by itself. It's kind of a, this weird circular reference kind of thing. So first, you should be able to build something before you can use it as a filter, right? You can't have a measure if it's impacted by measure filters. Well, you have to build a measure first so you can use it as a filter. Uh, hence, you will see the stacking, something that can use as a dimension happens before dimension filters, something you can use as a measure happens before measure filters. So let's take a look at how you can take advantage of this. So I wrote this percent of total in two ways. One is using fixed category sum of sales for the, div uh, for the division. The other is using exclude. As we know, fixed is not going to be impacted by dimension filters, and everything looks fine so far. Notice, as I filter things, my right-hand side is not changing. It's, I know still 16.17% 16, uh, 16 is the ratio of, uh, of the total for accessories. But left-hand side does something really silly. As I filter, the ratios are changing. And in the end, it tells me accessories is 100% of accessories, which is apparently not something I'm interested in doing. So the reason why you're able to do this is, that on, again, on the right-hand side, we're using a fixed calculation, where uh, what you're dividing with, the total, is not being affected by the filters you have. Uh, so it's always dividing by the, the total of the entire thing, regardless of what you selected on the right-hand side. So uh, this is a really commonly used trick, and this is one example of percent of total, and there are cooler ways of displaying this as well. So here uh, is something that pretends to look like uh, proportional brushing. So if you look at this effect, it almost looks like I'm highlighting parts of the bar, right? Uh, but what it is doing is I have this dual axis chart. I have bars of two different colors, and one of the calculations is impacted by the filter. The other is not impacted by the filter. So as I filter out, you start seeing uh, portions of the other bar. Uh, it's giving this uh, effect of proportional brushing. So you could do a lot of interesting things uh, using uh, you know, how the filters work uh, with Tableau if you understand uh, the filter sequence. So now the question is, we said, uh, dimension filters do not impact fixed calculations. And I showed you examples where you check filters, nothing, nothing makes a difference. So what if you really badly want to uh, filter out something from a fixed LOD? 
Well, remember we said this is where it happens. It's impacted by context filters. So what you need to do is take the dimension filter that you want to use with fixed LOD and promote it to context filter. And uh, this is very easy in your UI. Go to your filter shelf. Uh, if you see a pill, right click on it, there will, see, uh, there will be an option that says add to context. And uh, you can just click on it. Now all of your fixed calculations will be impacted by that filter. So um, one thing we talked about uh, so long, uh, so far was using just really simple expressions. Like here's one expression. Well, actually, we don't limit you to writing uh, a single expression. You can nest them as many times as you want. You can sum something, average that, and take the median of that, however many limits that uh, you want to put. But keep in mind, these are all joins that are happening in a database. At some point, you're going to upset your DB admin. But uh, we don't impose any limits. Uh, so when you think about this, or you have to understand the rules that govern inheritance uh, in nest nesting. So there are two types of inheritance uh, in table calculations. One is the impact of fixed, et cetera, because we, we said fixed has impacts on where this uh, is evaluated and which filters affect that. And then the dimensionality itself. So in this case, if you look at the first one, I'm doing fixed state, and nested I'm saying include customer. So include, as you know, inherits from its surrounding. If you build, uh, drag it in a vis by itself, it will inherit from the vis. If you put it inside the fixed calculation, it will inherit from the parent calculation. So in this case, it will include state, because that's a parent, and it will be the same as writing state customer. It will also inherit the, the strength of the fixed in this case, and it won't be impacted by the filters, because the parent is a fixed calculation. It will change the effect of include. Uh, so this is a common question I get. People have a lot of trouble with table calculations. They don't understand how it works often because it is really confusing. Uh, and the moment we added level of detail expressions, we keep hearing, oh, well, I'm glad that I don't have to write table calcs anymore. Do you really not need table calcs? So there are a few cases you will still need table calculations, and I'll actually give you a diagram of how to decide which way to go uh, in the next slide. But if you look at table calculations, one special thing they do is these moving calculations, like running sums and window averages and ranks, et cetera, right? Uh, but everything that I showed so far is just aggregations. It doesn't have any concept of ordering. So you can't do a rank. You can't do a running sum. Uh, those are things you can't do with level of detail expressions. If that is your problem, if you want to do a running sum or a rank, et cetera, uh, the choice, the better option will be table calculations. So it's, it's possible to do it that way. Beyond that, here is a chart I will try to explain because there's a lot in here. And this is from uh, one of our uh, partners and Zen masters uh, from Datablick. And the first question to ask yourself is, do I want to use the results as a dimension? If the answer is yes, the immediate thing you want to do is use a fixed calculation because there's nothing else, no aggregate you can write in Tableau that you can use uh, as a dimension. Right? So that's the first question. Uh, then the second question would be, well, do I want to do things like uh, top 10? Even though we can aggregate things, we can't give things like top 10 as part of level of detail expressions, in which case you would use something like sets. And the rest of it is more nuanced. Uh, so it is more of a choice where you want to uh, compute the stuff. The question you can ask yourself is, do I, have, do I have all the data I need in my view? So let's say you have uh, 10,000 marks in your view, and you just want to do an average of everything. Well, you can add a trend line, that will, a rough line that will do that for you. If you want to sum them up as a sec uh, second layer, maybe you can do totals. If those don't answer your question, you could probably do a table calculation. And all of these will compute everything locally, so you're not issuing any queries to the database. It will be fast, because there's no round tripping with the database. And you're not going to upset your DB admin because you're asking too many questions. So that is one way to think about it. Do I have all the data I need in my view? If you do, you have all, all of these options. If you want to push to the database, you can do uh, LOD calculations. If you don't want to, you can use ref lines, totals, table calculations, whichever. So the other option, if you said no to that question, I don't have the data in my view, uh, as in my example where I did include customer while I only had years in my uh, line chart, uh, you probably want to push that data into the data, uh, push that question to the database. So in that case, the answer would be use an LOD expression, and depending on whether you have to use it as a measure or a dimension, if measure is fine, you can use include exclude. If it has to be a dimension, you should use fixed. Again, I'll uh, send these slides so you can uh, study them at your own time, but that's a kind of a high-level overview of uh, how to read this. 
So we talked about all the exciting stuff, how it works, what you can do with it. Uh, now the stuff that doesn't work. Uh, it's like the fine print everybody reads on those radio ads. Uh, but I'll spend some time on it instead of going really fast. Uh, so what I did here was uh, we had a lot more limitations when we shipped this. And instead of deleting them, I wanted to uh, cross them out so you could see that we're making progress and things are getting better. Uh, one thing we still don't do is we don't materialize them in Tableau Extracts. And the reason for that is, uh, and it, it's a common question I get, well, fixed is joined at the row level. It knows its level of detail. You, you materialize things at level of de uh, row level. Why don't you do it? The problem is, so far, uh, extracts have not been aware of the level of detail of your calculations. The safety of a row-level calculation is it just takes some value, maybe multiplies with another value, but it's still at the row level. It's not going to mess up your aggregations. But if we took a fixed uh, calculation, it's already an aggregate. Let's say uh, I wanted to sum uh, all your spending, and it will repeat for all your transactions, your total spending. So if I do a sum over that, since Tableau doesn't know that is already aggregated, then you're double, triple, whatever, counting everything, because extract just thinks it's row-level data. So until we add the extracts, the capability to understand this, is, this has a level of detail, uh, this is not something that is going to work in Tableau. Uh, so there are things you could use uh, in level of detail expressions, and there are things you can't use. Uh, sets combined fields, been group and, uh, groups and parameters. Uh, I think it's been over a year we added them. Um, you can use them as part of LLG expressions. Uh, but you still can't use table calculations, aggregate calculations, exploit include, et cetera. Uh, and this is uh, really related to the order of operations. Because if you think about it, table calculations happen locally. Level of detail expressions happen in database. So we don't want to take something that Tableau computed here and try to pretend that database will be able to run that. Because a lot of databases won't be able to do table calcs themselves. And another thing we added, which uh, was more recent, uh, you can put actually expressions in level of detail, uh, uh, level of detail expressions dimensionality field. In the past, you could say fixed field name, sum of sales. But if you wanted to say fixed uh, date part day, uh, order date. A calculated field that will just get you the date, day of that date, it will give you an error. You can only refer uh, to a field name. So you would have to create a calculation. You write, you know, date, part, day, etc. Then you go to your uh, LOD and put the name. Now you can just type in uh, as part of the LOD expression and we won't complain. Uh, again, this is related to uh, how we handle table calculations. You can't put them in dimensionality. You, can al you can't also put them as part of uh, the aggregate expression. So you can't do fixed county index because uh, it's not something we can run inside the database. <clears throat> and since we talked about include and exclude and how their behavior is defined by the view, because it will add something or remove something from the view, it's not defined by itself, they're forced to be measures, they can't be dimensions. Since they can't be dimensions, they can't be used as dimensionality in uh, LOD expressions. Uh, so a common question I get about level of detail expressions is, does it work with blending? Um, and the answer is yes and no. Uh, there are two different, different types of blending, uh, and there are rules on how you can combine these things as part of blending. So you can have blend some data source and take one field from that data source and another field from the primary data source and use them in an LOD expression. Uh, it could be you know, both of them being dimensions or one dim dimension comes from one, measure comes from the other. You could define things in uh, blended data sources and uh, primary data sources, but everything in that expression should come from that particular data source. <clears throat> and we have two types of level of detail expressions. We, uh, sorry, uh, data blending. We call them data blending one and two, uh, which a lot of people uh, actually confuse. So I'll uh, give you an example of what the difference is. So here you could see I have a blended field. Uh, and I just named uh, Superstore to Superstorm to make it look like it's a different data set. Um, so, and I have a well-behaving LOD calc. I have fixed ship mode region sales, and you could see that I'm using it on, uh, from the secondary data source, and everything is fine. Uh, so I can break this. Uh, this is data blending one. Let's say I check that order ID. There's a broken link in there. I make that a, a non-broken link by clicking there. And now uh, I get an error. Now, you switch from data blending one to data blending two. Um, and here's what's happening is I have order ID as a linked field, but I'm not using it anywhere in the vis. If I drag order ID into the vis, it will start working again. Or if I uncheck that, I break that link, it will work again. And the error message is not that, exp uh, that doesn't explain what's going on really well. This is the same error message you would get if you use median here without an LOD expression because we don't do median over a blending. 
Uh, but that's the cause, because you have a field that is linked that's not being used in the view. And here, I unlinked it again. Sum of sales, perfectly fine. It's working. I went back to data blending one. So uh, let me do a recap and leave some room for questions. So what we learned today, we learned about different types of OED expressions and how they work. And we uh, did things like using aggregate dimensions, binning uh, as some examples. We uh, talked about how they respond to different filters and how you can take advantage of the filters for things like percent of total and uh, highlighting different parts of different marks. Uh, rules that govern nesting, how the inheritance works for the keywords as well as the dimensionality itself, and the decision uh, that you have to make whether to use table calculations or level of detail and how you can uh, think through that problem by yourself. So this is my uh, contact information. Uh, please complete the session survey uh, so I know how well or how badly I did. I can do better next year. There's a session repeat tomorrow. Uh, if you have any friends you would recommend a session uh, that uh, couldn't make it, uh, I'd be happy to talk to them. And uh, we have some related sessions, and some of them are hands-on uh, and marked as such. Uh, it, probably they're booked. Most of the hands-on sessions are booked last time I checked, but you can, you can try a standby. Uh, and there are some uh, other, uh, other uh, sessions that I mentioned that follow this other methodology on teaching what things you could do by walking you through very specific detailed examples with LOD calculations. So I'll go back with my contact info, and uh, if you have any questions, I think there will be a microphone. Thank you.